So you might be able to tell by the different shirt, it's a new day or another day. And I have spent several hours analyzing this circuit to try to figure out what's up with it. I have determined that this circuit does indeed have ghosts in its blood, but they were designed into the amp. The design of this amp is, is flawed. It is counter to what we know today is proper amp design. There's certain things going on in here that maybe I get why they did it like that, but it's not necessarily done correctly. And in certain ways, it's experimental. Like this whole jazz with the solid state switching. Uh, it's an interesting implementation, but the problem is we have these capacitors right here. So the idea is when we switch something, there's transistors in here, and then it pretty much, it connects this path to ground, right? But it has to go through this capacitor first. And then that grounds out the circuit we want to turn off. Now these capacitors cannot directly ground out a circuit. All they can do is put a very stiff load on the circuit so that it doesn't really work properly and the signal cannot agitate the current and voltage throwing through the line because that's what happens in a lot of these circuits. You know, there is not a solid flow of electricity. There's kind of an agitation, like the, the electricity is being like shaken. It's getting shaken up. And when you put this capacitor to ground on it, it loads it down in such a way that it cannot vibrate. And normally this is used in tone circuits in such a way that it'll only suppress vibrations in certain frequencies. But when we put a large enough value capacitor like an 0.22, that it's, it's essentially rolling off all the high frequencies. It's like you put a tone knob on it that rolls off all the highs in the effect of guitar range, but doesn't actually mute the circuit. And if we continue to increase the value of this capacitor, chances are we could reach a point of terminal roll off where, yeah, it is a more effective mute but that would involve doing experimentation. And it's these capacitors here that 0 0.22, 0 0.22, 0 0.22. There's also uh, another one here that I believe is part of that circuit. Older model amps like the Jubilee just straight up have a relay and the switch grounds out that circuit. It's super effective. Here, it is the reason why we get bleed. So when we're muting out the clean channel, we're not actually muting out the clean channel. And if you turn the clean channel up loud enough, you're gonna hear it while you're playing the distortion channel. And indeed, if you go to uh, this point here on the wiper and directly ground that out, then it actually does mute the circuit. If this was my amp and I was seriously using and gigging it, I would uh, be very tempted to redesign the switching in it. However, the Kavat is, when you have the amp dialed in in such a way that you're actually gonna be using it, it's not a problem. If you crank the normal clean channel up to the point that you can actually hear bleed in the distortion channel, then if you switch over to the clean channel, you're gonna find it is an order of magnitude louder than your distortion channel. The volumes aren't in the same perspective of each other because the other part of this philosophy is that the channel that is active is going to overcome the energy of the channel that isn't. Now, how well that works in practice if people complain about bleed or just sitting there tweaking the nose being like, oh, listen to that. I don't know, time will tell we actually have to use this amp. According to Buddy I'm talking to, he's not too interested in the clean channel and he's not gigging professionally. So chances are he just turn it down and it'll never be an issue. One of the other strange things that I find about this amp is the grounding scheme. You know, we have a capacitor hard mounted to ground to the chassis. Then we have the other capacitor hard mounted to ground to the chassis. On the capacitor, we have this black wire here and it goes to the PCB here. This is one of the primary ground buses that weaves through the board for the uh, power amp and power supply circuits and it might affect some of the phase inverter maybe reverb but for the most part it's the power amp power supply now it comes all the way over here it's also for the switching circuit because over here is where it connects to the switching circuit and you see this link here goes to this end and all it does is it's uh, ground for this transistor that's here and then it connects to this wire which connects to the back of the base pot but it's not signal for the base pot and it connects to chassis so we have a chassis ground point here all the way through and over here. That in theory creates a ground loop and on a higher gain amp, that would be a new goo, which is funny. It is a little bit noisier than I think it should be. The other thing we have is over here, 
Next to this tube socket is another hard ground point. Now each of these tube sockets has a hard ground point, but this one has wires connected to it. One of them goes up here to the speaker outputs, it's grounds for the speaker outs, but then another one goes over here to the effects loop, and then it passes through the two effects loops jacks, and it goes down and returns back around over to here where it has another hard point to the chassis. So we have a hard point here, a loop, and a hard point here where it grounds out part of the reverb circuit. So again, creating another loop. And I think I know why they did this. Because this thing is wired up using solid copper wire. And if you know anything about electrical engineering, you know that we do not put solid copper wire in a piece of equipment that vibrates. That is a no-go. And I think that's why they did this. Because if we lose ground connection to say the preamp and you're plugged into here and we lose that connection, your amp's gonna start to work and sound funny. We have saw this phenomenon in my uh, modding the trainer uh, YBA mod one, mod one, mod one mod video. And if you're touching the guitar and then you touch chassis, which is grounded, you're gonna become part of the circuit. The circuit's gonna try to pull the voltage it wants through you. You're gonna get electrocuted. So by putting a ground point on both ends of that ground bus, they're kind of, it's kind of some safety Safety redundancy, I think, because I, I did some experimenting. Indeed, I can disconnect this wire, I can disconnect this wire, and the circuit still works and sounds fine. I, I would do the ground circuit differently. The other thing is, and this probably, I hate to admit, took me about an hour to figure out. I was where I was I was analyzing this amp for quite a while last night. I couldn't for the life of me figure out where the preamp circuit's grounded. It's part of this loop that goes between the transformer and the socket and it goes through the effects loop but I could not find a black wire connecting to the preamp circuit and it is not on the same bus coming in from here and I'm wondering well is that the reason why the master volume isn't effective because if you turn the master volume all the way down it doesn't completely mute the signal I figured out why that happens too after a while Screwing around, I figured out it's this wire right here, which goes to the effects loop. It's the shield of this wire, and it is this dinky little just tacked on shielded connection here. It's not going through a hole, it's not wrapped around, it's just kind of tacked on there. That is the ground for the preamp circuit. So, if this little wire comes loose, your preamp circuit's gonna go ground hot, and you have a shock hazard. The saving grace here is that it isn't a solid copper wire. It's actually a stranded wire, and because of how thick this is and how much strands it is, is it's actually a fairly good ground connection other than the fact that by design we should not use the shielding of a cable as also the voltage ground bus source so that should be a separate wire which brings me to the master volume because you notice when you're playing with this amp you turn down the master volume all the way you still hear channel you still hear sound some might consider that bleed well it's because how they did the master volume and i don't get why they did this other than to work around provisions of the pcb and make it easy cheap and easy for them to make this amp and that is the master volume is right here now we have signal from the clean channel coming in from G here and then connecting to G input here. So a clean channel is flowing in from the bottom. And then our lead channel flows in from here. And they're pretty much just bust together. But here's something that you notice. Normally, signal comes into the top of the pot and goes out the wiper, but you see they have it connected here. That isn't how we normally do things. And indeed, on the board, right about here, these two resistors here, if I recall correctly, R21 and R22. Yes, that's R22 and R21 is right here, are just directly connected together to a trace that goes over to about here. C24, C R32, R34, which is uh, these guys. R35, C24, and R32. I might have called those numbers out wrong. And they're like right here and right here perspectively. So the trace only goes from here to here to actually connect the channels to the power amp circuit. What they did with the master volume is they have a trace that's connected between these running all the way down the board over to the master volume and then the master volume is just tied to ground. It's not actually sweeping between signal and ground like we actually do. Signal is directly connected to the circuit at all times and all it does is ground out that circuit, put a huge impedance load on it. 
Theoretically, that should work if it wasn't for the fact that the trace here, because they're very dinky and old style, is going to have some impedance. And so you're not getting a true ground reference. You know what? I wouldn't be surprised I didn't actually do this test. If I hook up the meter and put it in some sort of impedance mode, and I clip it to the top of these, or it's the bottom of these resistors, which should connect, you know, over to here. Yes, that's pretty low. And then I go over to the master volume pot and connect here. Eh, okay, it's not a huge hell of a lot of impedance. Technically, it should be good. So it might not be the impedance of the trace, but it's just, that's not how we traditionally do a master volume. And I think it could be modded in such a way that uh, we would get the effect that we want. But again, it's another situation where in practice, it's not really a big deal. You're gonna have the master volume set to something. You're not really gonna use it to mute the amp. And if you turn down the main volumes, those do it effectively. So the big problem at the hand is when I turned on this amp, it was buzzing something fierce. In an unexplainable way, I wasn't able to figure that out. I pulled the board back out. I double checked all my work. I looked it over. I could not find why that happened. And the funny thing is, is it went away on its own. So I'm gonna plug it in. I have not powered this amp up since last night. We'll see if it still makes that obnoxious hum. No. It's behaving today. I literally changed nothing. The only thing I can attribute to this is the fact that I had new capacitors and maybe there is some tomfoolery going on with those capacitors. I have heard other people working on amps breaking in their capacitors and having to do some sort of process, but I, I've never done that. I've installed a lot of new capacitors in my time and I've never done any pre-prep or break into them. But all I did to fix the amp was I'm probing around and I went to probe the voltage on the capacitors and I touched it to this terminal here, which you can hear makes a little bit of noise. As soon as I touched it to that capacitor terminal, boom, the hum went away and the amp started functioning normally. How touching a capacitor terminal is going to change the way the master volume works? If you have any ideas, let me know. I checked and double checked the ground scheme on this. I didn't go through and check every wire but I made sure that all the grounds are solid in here, did impedance checks, wiggled them around, make sure there wasn't any uh, bad, you know, and now the amp works normally. Yeah, the master volume's all the way down right now. Sounds fine. And in fact, that is one of the ironic things that I find about this amp. I think it's one of the best sounding vintage Marshalls I've experienced. Where right off the bat, it gives me a gain structure I like. Some people call it harsh and buzzy. And I find your ratio to channel volume and master volume affects your tonal qualities. But I'm a metal player. I like a bit more crunch and bite. I don't like the dark and muddy.
what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back together. I always say it's bad luck to put the knobs on before you've tested it, but it's tested. I gotta put the knobs on it now. I think I'd prefer a darker sounding tube in here like the JJ6CA7, or we tried KT77s in here by JJ and they sounded good too. Mind you, I'm not in the correct cab right now. Blood ghosts. Are you there, blood ghosts? I should uh, glue down these big beef caps before I put it back together. What would a meter have? Because actually last night that problem came back and then touched the meter and it was fine. What would that meter have that isn't there? Other than some sort of impedance load. A lot of amplifiers have like 100K or 220 to ground. I almost feel like I should put a capac a, a resistor or something across the uh, the terminals here. Like an AS1 meg or something. That would at least uh, properly discharge the caps. This amp uh, likes to hold some latent voltage in it, so be careful working on it. 477 volts, uh, what happens we put a one mega here? Nothing voltage wise, it stays at 477. And if we go 477 divided by one million ohms, that's uh, a very low dissipation. We could actually probably go higher than that, like 0.4 of a milliamps times 477. Eh, it's dissipating about a quarter watt. Uh, maybe a 470. I could see myself doing a 470. Whatever, we're not gonna worry about it right now. Let's get stuff glued down. Okay, we got some uh, hot schnot there. Oh, hey. Uh, done up. Uh, I've uh, glued down some of my capacitors. This guy was, uh, you know, it's sitting a bit proud, so I had to glue it to this capacitor, glue that capacitor down. The only one tricky to get at is I can't really get my nozzle in to fix this one, but we're all good. So now I gotta put it back together. Now, one thing to point out is this tube position here, V3, and specifically pertaining to this circuit here, V4A. It says V4A in the schematic, but it's V3. Bam. Very susceptible to noise. Not every preamp tube is going to work in there. We have a brand new Mullard CV4, oh, blah, 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 and it was humming like a burr. I put a uh, Electro Harmonics EH7025. 7025 is a designation for a low noise 12AX7, and she's quiet now. So it's a good thing he bought one of those because that's probably gonna be the ticket for that position here. So now I think we can put this back together. That problem hasn't come back, so. All right, bud, she's all back together and uh, sounds pretty quiet now. Yes, I do think so. Actually closing up the chassis and putting the tube shields on. I think we're in a good place now. So now let's see what we got. I like my gain. Volume's about halfway. sure how I feel about the speaker in this but it sounds better than the crap that I'm using normally which is actually my recording speakers they sound good recorded though <laughs> let us test the reverb That knob's responding more normally now. Now the funny thing is the reverb's gotta be directly proportional to how much volume you drive on it because these volumes, the reverb is post volume here. So if these are down, it can't work the reverb very much. the thickest reverb in the world. Seen here, I have a random Marshall foot switch, which should be compatible. Yeah, channel switches. Crank that verb up. or 
How high is this? I can't tell because the knob's worn out. But now what happens if I switch channels? Yeah, I don't hear the channel bleed. Like if I crank this while I'm in the lead channel, Maybe we're in a better place now. I'm gonna try adding a bit of overdrive. Here's one of my 250 builds. Diode clipping's disabled. I'm running vintage mode, which means I have the um, 0.01 or the 10 NF input capacitor in place and an OP90G op amp. So, what did we learn here today? The grounding scheme kind of sucks, but it works. The switching circuit is a bit lame, but it works in practice. You need a low noise tube on the final buffer circuit, which is V3 in this amp, V4 in other models. The solder mostly still seemed good. Maybe this amp didn't need caps, but it's done now and it's not a bad idea. And I don't know about the uh, EH60A7s. Uh, I'd want something darker and warmer sounding. Uh, EH has a, you know, they're good for making a darker amp brighter. I find. I think uh, JJ 67s or again the KT77s worked in this. But other than the hum, which you know I'm not gonna mess with it anymore unless something really starts to become a problem, uh, this guy's good to go and actually it has it has one of the more preferable Marshall tones. I like it. I like it. I, I could play this thing for hours. I, I did when I first got it working there in my shop before it started glitching out again. Do I recommend it? Uh, this isn't a review. Whatever, man. It's all taste. Some people hate this amp. Some people love this amp. It's up to you. But I hope you enjoyed this. Working on amplifiers. Do I have any other amps planned? Nothing major right now. I got a bias a trainer. But other than that, well, stay tuned. Stay tuned for amps, guitars, pedals, computers, and any number of things that I haven't shown you yet. Because there's, there's lots. There's honestly... Heck, if you're into the guitar stuff, you might not even like this channel like a year from now and I'm not doing guitar stuff. You never know, bud. You never know, bud. But stay tuned anyway. Because it's always going to be interesting. Interesting to me, at least. I don't know why you wouldn't think it's cool. What is that?